welcome to lesson two. And I hope you enjoyed or um, found useful last week's podcast, how I talked to you about creating the main character and the characteristics that you need to look at. Well, this week we're going to move on again to characters, but this week we're going to look at sub-characters and floating characters and the triangle of characters that I create. This is how I do it. This is what the formula that I use. So lesson two, a triangle of characters. So here's my triangle. And there is, at the top of the triangle, is the main character. And this character, of course, for my story that's coming up, is going to be Alderwad. So that's the main character. Now you've got layer two. Now layer two are the sub-characters. Now these are characters um, that will support the main character. They are important in the story, but not quite as in dominant and important as the main character. They're there to support the main character. And then we go down to layer three, the bottom layer of the triangle, they are the floating characters. They are the characters that are going to be coming in and out of the storyline as you progress with your plot. So, let's explore a little bit more about characters. So, let's see how the three layers of the characters from the triangle actually work. Let's go. So the main character, as I said, I covered up last week. And if you want to refresh uh, how I did that main character, then go back to podcast uh, one and go and have a look again. But sub-characters. The main subject of today's homeschooling lesson for you all. Home characters. So... These are characters that are there to support your main character, to tell their story. They have quite significant roles to play in the storyline, but they're not as dominant as the main character. Who are these characters? These characters, well, in your, in your stories, they should be friends of the character, um, maybe some family members of the character, or maybe a, um, a close working relationship uh, with somebody. They are the, they are the sub-characters, they're there to prop up, support the main character, to tell the story that you're getting across to your readers. The sub-characters can be animals, and in some of my stories, they are animals. But main characters can be animals as well. Yeah. So let's turn over. So when you have a look at my book, The Smart Kids, you'll see that the main characters have no more than two or three sub-characters. That's all that you need. Um, too many sub-characters will just deflect away from the main character, and that's what you don't want to do. So your main character, the pinnacle of the triangle, is the most important character in the book. But these characters, the sub-characters, that sit underneath the main character, they're just as important, but you can't put them to in front of the, the main character. They're there to support that main character. And a lot of them are says they are either going to be the friends of your characters or your um, family members of the characters or somebody who's got a close relationship with them. So, examples. And I'm going to take you examples in my book. The smart kids. Let's go to um, the story um, Hamish. Now Hamish is my little Scottish boy and when you look at the story the, he has 
two friends, Nile and Kedak. Now they are the sub-characters in that story. So Hamish is the main character. Layer two, you have got Nile and Kedak. In my little Russian girl, Dushka, the sub-characters are Boris, her friend, and her brother, Mika. So in that story, the triangle again, you've got Dushka at the top of the triangle, the main character, and then you've got Boris and you've got Mika, the two sub-characters in layer two of the triangle, supporting Dushka's story. In Amarita, slightly different because, yes, she's the main character, but the sub-characters are a dog, Gretel this, this time, her St Bernard dog, and her brother Heinrich. So as I said, you can have um, an animal as your sub-characters, and yeah, you can have an animal as your main character because some authors have written all about um, animals. Paddington Bear, for example, he's the main character. The Michael Bond, um, who wrote about him. Paddington's the main character. And also, um, in my uh, character, um, Anjala. Well, she's the main character, the first layer. The second layer, the sub-characters, is Heaven, the Snow Leopard, who she's talking about, and her brother Rajesh. So you see how already you've got your main character at the top of the triangle, layer one, layer two, you've got your sub-characters. And when you look at my stories, the sub-characters are no more than two or three characters at the most. As I said, to do any more, you're just going to deflect away from the main character and that you don't want to do. Right, let's turn over. So, with your sub-characters, your layer two characters, again, you need to draw up a list of their characteristics. Um, like the main character, you know, for what to include uh, to go and revisit the previous podcast. So, if you want to see what I, you know, again, the characteristics, Go back to the podcast of pod one and see what I use as tools for creating those, the main character and the sub-characters, what I use. Go and have a look back. My, so that's the first layer of the triangle, the second layer of the triangle. Now the third layer are what I call floating characters. Now, floating characters, these are characters that float in and out of the plot as the story progresses. They're simply there to move the story along, um, add to the story, but not really take over from the sub-characters or the main characters. So these are characters that are just going to float in and out as the story goes along. Um, so when you introduce a new scene, and you can create these characters instantaneously on the spot, create them. But when that scene in your storyline finishes, those characters just disappear. And you don't have to explain to the reader why they've disappeared. You don't have to explain to the readers why you've brought them in. They are just there floating in and out to add to the story, to give a, a little bit more uh, interest to the reader to see what the story is about. There are a few more characters. And when you... Um, are creating these floating characters, you don't have to, I certainly don't, you don't have to go into the same detailed characteristics. You, because they're just in and out. So you don't have to 
detail, you know, age, what they wear, what's their personality, uh, what's their family background. None of that. You don't have to do it because they're not in-depth characters like your other two layers in the triangle. So that's the difference really between this bottom layer of the third layer of the characters in the triangle, the third layer, and the other two layers. They're just there to float in and out and support the storyline. So, in my book, Smart Kids, as a couple of examples, Hamish, say for example, well, there is a character there called Mrs. Mackay. She's a floating character. It's when the boys, Hamish, Nile, and Kira, come back off the moorlands and they come back into the village. She's the village um, shop, our proprietor, post office proprietor. She spots the two boys, three boys, coming back from the moors and she stops and says, Guys, where have you been? And they're a bit dubious to tell her where she's been. And she invites them in because it's very early in the morning into behind the post office scenes for um, to have a bit of breakfast. But as soon as they hear about the story of the um, millionaire man about, you know, who the um, who's come up to do the uh, the chase the, of, of the stag Rufus, they go out the door. That part of the story finishes, that scene finishes there and then. So Mrs Mackay, the floating character, has gone. She's disappeared. And you don't have to explain to the readers why she disappeared. She's just disappeared. She appeared and disappeared. She's a floating character. And another little example is in my New Zealand story well, of Anaru, the teacher, Mr O'Connell. He is there when um, Anaru says he's the, going to be the coach for the rugby team that Anaru wants to join. And it's just a, con a brief conversation between Anaru and himself about oh, making arrangements for joining the team, what time that the team um, meet up to um, you know, do their training for the rugby. But once that scene has gone, it's only about half a page long in the story, the character Mr O'Connell, who all of a sudden appeared, has gone. He's slipped away out of the storyline and he doesn't come back into it. There's no need. He's done the job that I wanted him to do. He was a passing by character. He was a floating character. So those are uh, floating characters and I hope that you are starting to see the different characters that when you write a book, a story, types of characters that you need to put in, your main character, your sub-character in layer two, and in layer three, your floating characters, ones that just go in and out and disappear and reappear sometimes, but they're not main characters, they're not sub-characters. They're there just to support the storyline as you go through the scene. So hopefully by now, you're starting to see how I build my characters in my stories. Not a little smiley face. Just put a smile on all your faces. And mine. Right. Like last week when I did the main character, I then reflected and told you all about Alderwood, the main character of my Icelandic story. So here I am coming back to doing exactly the same thing. Putting the story, the characters of my next story to you. So you can see how I'm using the main character, where the sub-characters fit in the story and where the floating characters are going to fit into the story that I'm writing. So here we have layer one of the triangle, the triangle of characters. That is Alderwood. He's the main character. He's in layer one of the characters. He's the only one in that layer. Layer two, the two sub-characters that he's got. I told you he'd got friends, Haldor and Fanna. Well, they are the sub-characters. And here they are, Haldor, Fanna. Two friends, that's what they are, they are friends. And they are the sub-characters. They support 
Arthur was, the main character. Layer three are the floating characters. There's no names to the characters down here because they're just going to be characters that I'm going to create as I go along just to fit the storyline. And they're going to be either family members or they are going to be uh, members of the public or somebody who's got a close relationship, um, maybe, yes, with the main character. But they're just going to be in and out characters. So, main character of the triangle, sub-character, ha Haldo and Fanna, and then floating characters. Let's see what they're going to be about. Let's. So, characteristics. Now, characteristics for floating characters, you don't really have to do, as I said, because they're just floating. But you do need to um, really have the characteristics uh, for your sub-characters. Well, we already have the characteristics for Alderwood. If you want to refresh your memory, as I said, go back to last week's podcast and go and have a look. See what his characteristics are, his main attributes. As I've already said, the floating characters, you don't really need a set of characteristics. So that leaves us with just to do the two sub-characters, and in this case, the two boys, Haldo and Fan. So let's put some bones to the characteristics of both of these boys. So Haldo, um, age 12 boy. His family, he is... Um, He's got one older brother, I've given him, and a father. So he's from a single parentage family. And his looks, I said he's got brown hair, he's tall, he's plump. Well built, a bit like the name of his character, Haldor meaning in Icelandic thunder god. That's where the image I got. No, he's a well built character. Um, no glasses and no disabilities. Brown eyes and I gave him curly hair. Clothes. He has a red hand knitted jumper with fair aisle patterns on. He has multicoloured Nordic socks. He has um, an orange waterproof coat jacket. Brown walking boots. He has matching blue and yellow striped scarf and hat. And he has blue jeans and he has blue woolen gloves. So those are the clothes and the style of clothes that I've given him and the collars that I've given him as well. What the color of his clothes? That's important because remember, you switch the colours and you've forgotten about it and you can't remember what colour scarf they're wearing, what colour shoes they're wearing or what type of shoes they're wearing. Because I say walking boots here for all of the characters, your readers are going to pick it up and it doesn't look very good. So that's why you need to list it down and stick to your character's characteristics. But you only have to do the characteristics for your main characters and your sub-characters. I said his friends are Alderwood and Fanna, that fits. Uh, personality, he's a straight talking cool guy, shy around girls. Hobbies and interests, fishing, running, swimming. So he's a bit of a sports person. Um, school, well he goes to the same school as Alderwood and Fanna. Uh, pet, no pet. Phone, I gave him an iPhone 11. And the house wears a red two-storey wooden clad house in the middle of the village where all the characters come from. Fanna. Now he's a different character because you need your characters to be different. Because if they're the same, it's, it doesn't add any value to the story. So you need to have different characters that bring different characteristics along so that you can talk about those different characteristics. So for Fanna, he's age 11. Yes, he's a boy. Uh, his family, mum and dad, uh, only one, one sister and one brother. 
and they are both younger than him. So he's actually the eldest child here, whereas you'll find out that Alderwad was the youngest. And looks, I've got Fanna down as tall, skinny, blonde, wavy hair, blue eyes, no glasses and no disabilities. Clothes, I've given him a blue hand-knitted Fair Isle pattern jumper. I have given him um, yellow gloves and scarf and the hat's got a, is a pom-pom hat. I have given him, they're all wooden, woolen because that's what you find in Iceland. They are woolen clothes, woolen jumpers, woolen hats, woolen scarves. They wear them. So that's why they are woolen. And the fair isle patterns that you see, a lot of the kids there wear the fair isle patterns because that's what they wear in Iceland. I gave him black jeans and I've given him a dark brown walking boots. So you can see the difference already. They've got different clothes, um, different colours, it just adds a little bit of interest. And another, let's, let's have a go to the friends. He's obviously got the friends, so Alderwood and Haldor. Personality, now this is slightly different because Fanna is a reflective, thoughtful, sensitive, shy, introvert character. He's different from the other two. So can you see how I've put a a softer, gentler character in here, because he's going to bring a different aspect to the story. School, it goes to the same school as Alderwood and Haldor. They all go to the same school. It's the village school in the fishing village. Hobbies, he loves reading, fishing and drama. And if you look at the hobbies, they really do reflect the personality, because you haven't got that sporty person here. You know, so he's not going to be doing swimming or rugby or uh, skiing or things like that. He's the reflective, thoughtful kind. He's the person going to be reading the book. He's the one that's going to be, um, yes, into drama. He and, and fishing, he's shy. A lot of fishing people are quite, you know, shy people. They like to go out on their own. So that's why I put fishing in. So you can see he's a different character to Alderwood and he's a different character again to Haldor. And you need to have different characteristics to your characters. Um, I give him an iPhone 7. Um, he has a hamster called Thor. Again, this is reflecting, this is a small animal and it's reflecting on the personality, be reflective, thoughtful, sensitive, introvert. And he's a reading and drama person. So not into a big dog or anything like that. He's different characteristics to the other two. And the house, uh, I said, it's a three bedroom, two storey house, collar and yellow on the outskirts of the village. It's a wooden clad house. Lots of the houses in the Nordic countries, particularly in Sweden, Norway and Iceland, they are wooden clad and they're quite colourful. But you see them, you know, coloured in, painted in red colours, blue, green, yellow. Um, and when you think about it, that's probably been done because they have a lot of dark nights, so to have bright colours cheers them up a bit. That's what I've understood that why they've done it. Uh, when you go and look at the pictures of other houses in Iceland or Norway, those two countries in particular, you'll see the wonderful colours of all the houses. So that's why they are in the book in the story and I'm telling you how, what colours the houses are and what type of houses they are. So this really completes the sessions for um, character building. So just to summarise, like you have your main character, you then have, that's in there one, and we've covered off all the characteristics of why I gave them to Alderwood in my previous podcast. You want to refresh go and have a look at that podcast this week i've covered off sub characters which are normally friends they're normally family members or they are close relationship uh, people but whilst they are strong characters they are not as dominable as the main characters and that's important don't make them um, outshine your main character and only stick to two or three sub-characters. 
And then we go down to layer three, the floating characters, as it says. They just float in and out as the scenes of your plot move on. So they're there just to get the story going along. You don't have to explain why they've appeared, why they've disappeared, and you don't have to go into any characteristic details. You can just put them in and take them out and let them flow. That's what they do. So next week, I'm moving away from characters. And what I want to do or talk to you about is the plot. Building the plot, the storyline. So that's what I'm going to do next week. I hope you've enjoyed um, how I work the characters out, the formula that I use, the, the triangle of characters. I hope that's some uh, inspiration to some of you and, or, and you're going to use those, that strategy that I use. Try it. That's all I say. Try it. But next week, we're going on to the plot. So stay safe and I'll see you next week. Thank you for listening. And don't forget, if you want to email me at jtc0658 at gmail.com because you've got any questions or you want to talk to me about something, feel free to do so.